Good morning. Good morning. And then that is the quest for the bread of love. Everybody needs this bread. These are Dr. King's next words in this address titled, A Knock at Midnight. He links bread, the staff of life, to both hope and love. Dr. King would have had in his mind the words of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, Paul declares, and ends the chapter by reminding his people. And now faith, hope, and love remain, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The love that Paul writes of, the love that Dr. King exhorted his followers to rely on and practice, requires strong, powerful, intentional action. Indeed, love is hope in action. Love doesn't require assurance that it will win because it may well not. But love bears witness. Love stands in solidarity. Love believes in things unseen. Love protects. Love endures. Love hopes. And this is, I believe, the essence of Dr. King's concept and practice of beloved community. My name is Mary Kelly Persine. I'm a member of MDUC with my family since I think about 2012. Um, and I want to thank Reverend Rodney for inviting me to speak on hope in conjunction with the celebration day of Dr. Martin Luther King, one of my most important spiritual guides. When I think of hope as Dr. King practiced it, I can't separate it from the active, powerful, strong, intentional love he had for his people. His hope and his love were never easy for him to practice, and ultimately they cost him his life. But hope and love gave him a way to persevere in the face of what by the end of his life had become persistent despair. This is one aspect of Dr. King's life that we don't hear very much about. The fact that his fight for living wages and against war was not successful during his lifetime. And he sometimes struggled to keep moving forward in the face of seeming indifference from so many of his fellow Americans. He loved, he hoped, he endured, he bore witness, he stood vigil, but he did not win all he envisioned. Author John Deere sets, sets the stage for Dr. King's last push for freedom. In the months before Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, as he planned the Poor People's Campaign and spoke out against the US war in Vietnam, he plunged into despair. He spent his last birthday, which was 54 years ago this week, in staff meetings, trying to convince them why they had to bring disenfranchised, low-income people to Washington, DC, and shut it down. After we get there, he said, we'll call the peace movement in and try to close down the Pentagon. I don't know what Jesus had as his demands other than repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. My demand is repent, America. We live in a sick, neurotic nation, but this campaign is based upon hope. Hope, he concluded, is the final refusal to give up. It helps to break that refusal down to its practical meaning. Over the years, I have drawn so much strength from these words by Rabbi Rami Shapiro, which draw on Micah chapter 6, verse 8, and the ancient rabbinic commentaries, known as the Pirkei Avot. Do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. I draw on this message and on the wisdom I have absorbed through many years of association with the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund in formulating the images that I associate with these verses. As I tell my children, you must carry your pebble to the mountain or become as a drop of water in the mighty stream. This is the work of justice, to give your life alongside others so that your pebble, your drop of water, takes part in a work far larger than yourself and far exceeding the paltry amount of time that you spend on this earth. Do your part, do what you must, but never ever quit. 
and that is your bulwark against despair and always for joy. In solidarity with Dr. King and the Poor People's Campaign, now led with Reverend w William Barber, in solidarity with lawyers and advocates and teachers, with my neighbors and siblings and community fighting racism, in solidarity with transgender youth fighting for the right to exist, in solidarity with all those who understand that the work of liberation frees each of us, in solidarity and in hope and in love. In the words of Dr. King, I refuse to give in to the politics of despair. <laughs>